Welcome to the California Housing and Community Development Training Series. Today's session is titled Subrecipient Selection. This subrecipient selection training will focus on the types of subrecipients, selection methods, capacity assessments, and subrecipient agreements. So, what is a subrecipient? Subrecipients are CDBGCV grantees partner in COVID response. They directly implement a CDBGCV funded public service activity. They determine who is eligible to receive CDBGCV assistance. Their performance is measured in relation to whether CDBGCV objectives were met. They are responsible for programmatic decision making and they must adhere to applicable CDBGCV and other federal requirements. Subrecipients can either be nonprofits or government agencies. Nonprofits are usually, but not always, corporations, associations, agencies, or faith based organizations with nonprofit status, such as a 501c3, with a board of directors and executive officer. Government agencies include public agencies, commissions, or authorities that are independent of the grantee's government. For example, a public housing authority or park district. Contractors, developers, and businesses cannot be subrecipients. A contractor must be competitively procured and provides a specific scope of services. A developer is awarded funds to construct an affordable housing development, for example, and can either be a for profit or non profit entity. And a business is usually a beneficiary receiving CDBGCV funds, for example, through a business assistance program. What is the difference between subrecipients and contractors? Subrecipients are designated by the grantee via a selection process. They are subject to all applicable administrative, financial, and cross cutting federal rules and requirements. They can only charge actual costs to deliver the activity. They must adhere to the written agreement which outlines their responsibilities, and the recipient monitors all aspects of the program. Contractors, on the other hand, must be procured. They are subject to requirements based on the specified scope of work. Their costs may include a profit, and they must deliver services identified in the contract. Please note that the main differences between subrecipients and contractors comes into play in the following three areas. First, the process by which they are selected and awarded CDBGCV funds. Second, the applicability of requirements that are passed down to each. And third, the monitoring and performance of each. All subrecipients must meet the grantee specific selection criteria, carry out the specified program on behalf of the grantee, comply with all federal statutes, regulations, and CDBGCV program requirements, comply with all terms and conditions of the subrecipient agreement, and meet all established performance goals. Ultimately, the grantee is responsible for subrecipient compliance and performance. Subrecipients can be selected via a Notice of Funding Availability, or NOFA, Request for Qualifications, or RFQ, or directly via Sole Source or a Method of Distribution, or MOD. A Notice of Funding Availability, or NOFA, is a publicly available solicitation by which a CDBGCV grantee makes known its intentions to award CDBGCV funds for a specified purpose. A request for qualifications, or RFQ, is a process to request interested parties to submit a letter of interest and a statement of their qualifications to administer a CDBGCV funded activity. Direct selections include direct awards to a known entity or a method of distribution, or MOD, to predetermined entities for predetermined amounts. Before selecting a subrecipient and entering into a subrecipient agreement, 
Grantees should assess the capacity of these entities to implement and administer CDBG CV funds. Capacity assessments should include a review of grant management history, staffing and turnover, program and activity experience, financial and tracking systems, as well as contractor oversight. Subrecipient agreements must include the following a statement of work or scope of services, a detailed budget including all sources of funds allocated to a project or activity, the period of performance, the records to be maintained and reports to be submitted, the uniform administrative financial and cross-cutting requirements, and lastly, provisions on the suspension or termination of the agreement as well as a reversion of assets and enforcement. Subrecipient selection and related requirements are located in the Uniform Administrative Requirements at 2 CFR Part 200, Subpart D. Requirements for Notice of Funding Availability are located in the Uniform Administrative Requirements at 2 CFR Part 200, Appendix 1, both of which are hyperlinked here. So now, let's test your knowledge. Which of the following entity types can be subrecipients? The answers are provided on the next slide. Here are the answers. How'd you do? Only nonprofits and government entities can be subrecipients. Businesses and developers cannot be subrecipients because they are recipients or beneficiaries of CDBG CV funding. Contractors must be procured. Thank you for attending this California Housing and Community Development training session on procurement and cross cutting requirements. If you have any further questions, please contact your grant administrator.